Morning everyone, Ray from Hike A Lot. Here we just wanted to do a quick video on something that uh, got a request from one of the followers out there that was asking um, why I use certain types of cordage at one time versus another. Uh, so today I'm going to run you through three different types of cordage that I use and then some of the differences with sizing and uh, reasons within each one of those segmentations as to why I pick it up. So stay tuned and we'll learn all about cordage. Right, guys, so the one that most people think about when you think about cordage using for outdoor use is just standard old paracord. Uh, some people call it 550 cord. Uh, also, it can be called parachute cord. I guess that's where the para is short for. Them. Um, what that is is a, a, sh a sheathed uh, cordage with inner filament liners inside. Actually, I'll show you, show you on this piece. You have inner filament liners in here that give it its strength. The 550 means it should have at least a brake strength of 550 pounds. A lot of times when you get this, uh, and it does have a different number of um, uh, filament liners inside there, typically pretty decent cordage is going to have seven strands in there, but you can get someone a little bit different in there. Not all paracord is created equal. You may get paracord in you know, a package that looks like this, a package that looks like this, where it's all bailed up. It'll actually just be in a spool like this, sealed up. Um, obviously, the, the cheaper you go with it, the less quality it's going to have, even with the, the sheath liner and, and how often and how easy it frays. Like I actually, I just trimmed, I just trimmed this stuff off and it's already kind of fraying and pulling out. Uh, ideally, you want some of the, these inner filament liners will stick and stay together. Uh, this stuff's pretty um, cheap right here. You do have a different variation of that. Uh, there's exact same approach, but it's actually Paracord 1100. Um, so it's 1100 um, pound brake strength on it. Uh, this stuff is obviously bigger. It's bulkier than would say you know a roll of 550. Uh, so the 550 usually comes in in hanks of about 50 to 100 feet. Uh, so actually this right here is 100 feet. Excuse me, this is a 50 foot roll here. Um, you can normally pick that up for, you know, seven to 10 bucks on the low end, maybe closer to 12 for some, some better quality stuff. Um, then when you get up to like this 1100, the only place I've ever found this uh, has been in like a 100 foot hank, which is what this is, and it runs about 20, 21, 22 dollars, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, uh, but so this is obviously a much bigger, much bulkier version. Now Paracord does have, have a tendency to, when you put it under a load early on when it's new, it will stretch. And the cheaper stuff will stretch a bit more than the more expensive stuff does, uh, but it'll all stretch and give to a degree. Um, I like to use this for my ridge lines because I'm often reusing those. And the good thing about this versus some of our other options, um, this stuff, it's it's pretty easy typically to get your knots back out of. So if you're wanna, wanting to put something up and not have to cut it down each time, I found Paracord to be pretty good. Um, I, I use it a lot. I use it a lot in my ridge lines, but in conjunction with one of the other options that we're gonna talk about in just a few minutes. Um, but it, it do do keep in mind that it does stretch, uh, but then after a point it, it will quit stretching. I have ridge lines that I have legitimately used for six, seven, eight years at this point that are paracord ridge lines that still hold up great and they get used often, so it's good stuff. Now you do have one other option on the paracord front, and this is uh, there's a couple different variations in vendors out there that make it. Uh, there's a Titan cord and a Survivor cord. There's a couple other companies. Uh, the thing that's different about this, one, it's the it's a grade three or type three military grade paracord, which is the, typically what you want to look for for quality stuff. In addition to the filaments, where you've got your normal sort of seven strand inside there, there's also a fishing line down inside there, and there's a multi-purpose wire that you could use for snares or just binding things up. And there's also a uh, waterproof fire tender inside here as well. So you could pull those strands out and utilize all three of those and still have your normal sort of paracord. You can tell when you're tying knots with it that because of the extra stuff inserted in there, it's a little harder to knot just because it's it's a stiffer cordage, uh, but it's not a bad thing at all. This stuff is more pricey. Uh, it runs about 35 bucks for a 100 foot roll. It's definitely not something I use just lackadaisically. I'm, I'm pretty deliberate with when I use this stuff. I do like it, I do carry it, but I don't use it just for everyday stuff.
Now next up on our list is tarred bank lime. And I usually keep two different sizes. I do a number 36 and a number 18. Uh, number 36 I use more often than not. And it is, it's basically like a tarred trot line. It's a nylon woven strand and then it's tarred. It makes it extra tacky. Um, you want the stuff with the, with the really thick kind of tarry smell to it. It seems to last a lot longer than just the regular old nylon cordage and it doesn't fray up like it, like it does otherwise. I use this for things that I'm literally planning on putting up and leaving up from a knot perspective. Uh, this stuff, because it is tarred, once you get a knot in it, it does not want to back out well at all. It sticks. And I mentioned earlier that I use paracord in conjunction with one of the others. It's this one. So I'll do my ridge line out of paracord. And then I'll do my prussic knots. If you want to see a, how to do a prussic knot and how to use those, I'll throw links to a video on those down below in the description. Um, but this stuff, kind of once you get the prussics tied onto the, to the ridge line, this stuff does not move until you want it to move. Um, but like I said, if it's something that I'm planning on putting up uh, and leaving up, I, I usually default to bank line. Uh, one, it's cheaper uh, than that stuff over there. It doesn't have the same strength, but it's kind of a kind of a disposable item for me when I think about it. Uh, so the number 36, so this is a 235 pound brake strength, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, and this is a almost 500 foot roll. I think it's 486 foot. And I can pick this up for about $15, depending on where you go. Um, like I said, it's much more portable, so I have you know, 50 foot of paracord versus almost 500 here in a similar size, a little bit thicker, obviously, uh, but still about taking up about the same space. Uh, obviously, I'm not carrying it inside of here, um, but takes up a lot less room, uh, significantly cheaper per foot. Uh, so I do like that stuff. I use it pretty often. Like I said, it's typically, it's not gonna, I'm typically using it when I, I wanna leave stuff up and not take it back down. Uh, and I'm not worried about it sitting out in the weather. With the tarring effect, it does hold the weather a little bit better. The bank line, one thing about it, it doesn't really stretch out like the paracord does. So it's pretty tight. When you put it in there, it kind of stays where it is. It doesn't have a lot of elasticity to it. There's a little stretch to it, but not a ton. Uh, like I said, you just have a harder time backing the knots back out with that. Now, I do also often carry this thinner gauge. And you can see this is much, much thinner. So, and I'll use this if I'm worried about space in a bag or something, it's just a smaller footprint. Um, this one's unraveled a little bit here. Uh, but this number 18, so this has about 113 pound brake on it. This is a 250 foot roll and this is about $10. So for virtually the same price as this and significantly less footprint, now it's not as strong, it's harder to get the knots back out, but now I've got something really compact that has a lot of footage on there that I can use and put into play. Uh, so if I'm if I'm trying to save space and not worried about taking knots back out, but still need to have a good bit of cordage, this is kind of my default. I don't go through this nearly as much as I do this. But from a price per foot, uh, this piece, if you're not worried about having a super high strength on the, the break point, uh, this stuff's kind of hard to beat. And then kind of the next big grouping that I use is more like the Dyneema cording. And, and there is a Kevlar cordage that sort of sits between this and the other two that we've talked about. Uh, so this stuff is, again, it's a braided cordage and this is the 764 um, diameter. This stuff has a brake strength point of about 1600 pounds. So if I do not want this to go anywhere and I do not want to drop it, so like I use this on my hammock straps, things like that, things that are going to be supporting a good bit of weight. Uh, I want to be sure I'm not going to end up on the ground. Uh, so this stuff, it is pricier. This is about $35 for a 100 foot spool, um, but it doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't stretch. Uh, it doesn't fray. It just stays and it stays and stays and it's you can get it in a couple different diameters. Uh, this is actually the whoopee slings for my for my hammock. Um, stuff just lasts and lasts. And so you can get it in a smaller diameter too and I don't even remember what the size was on this. Uh, it's it's about half of what this is over here and I, f I forget how long ago it was when I even ordered this. Uh, but these are yet again these are hammock straps that have held me. Um, they're pr 
pretty impressive. They're just they're just kind of a pain in the rear to splice these in. Um, I don't even remember what size these are. You can go up to like a three sixteenths on this Dyneema cordage. Um, and I, I keep calling it Dyneema. There's uh, some people list it under Amsteel. I think Amsteel is a company that makes it. Um, but you can go up to like a three sixteenths, I know, and it has an almost five thousand pound break point. Now that stuff again is getting pricier. So whereas this is about thirty five per hundred feet. Uh, that 3 16ths is about 35 for 25 feet. Uh, so it goes up, goes up pretty quickly, but again, this stuff is, if you really need something that you can trust, this Dyneema stuff is pretty darn rock solid. Well, you guys, hopefully you found that beneficial and you took away a couple of nuggets you can use next time you're out on the trail. And as always, if you're out there right now, just remember, left foot, right foot, repeat. We'll see you out there soon.